you know, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody who continues to show up like week after week. You know, I'm seeing familiar faces. Um, you know, we got Herman in here, uh, Myers with us, Demetria, both Johns, Jess, Jaden. Von D, Kyler, Elaine, like I see y'all, y'all. What's up, Marcy? I see you, girl. Marcy is dope too. If you see her down there, she does a lot of uh, photography stuff for me. So if you need a dope photographer, she's there. But anyway, um, I just really appreciate the community that continues to show up. And we thought it would be uh, a really good um, pivot to kind of talk about, like we always talk about how to succeed in sync licensing and how to succeed as an indie artist um, and, and what it takes. What are some of those best practices? um to you know to level up in your uh in your career but you know you really won't get very far if we don't deal with you know the internal like you know our well-being and the state of who where we are and the thoughts that we live with and how we perceive ourselves and all that kind of stuff and so that's just as not even more important than you know all of the the skills that we're kind of teaching you all and, and sharing um, on how to break through in this industry. Like if you don't know how to handle the success that's coming, if you don't know how to, um, you know, feed yourself, you know, as a person, you know what I mean? Not even as, as a, you know, creative, just as a human, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, you, you won't have a very satisfying, um, you know, career. So let, let, let me just kind of dig into this. And I don't know how long or how short this is going to be. I'm going to try to, you know, be as concise as I can. Cause I've wrote a lot of notes down, but why I wanted to do this talk, you know, we talked about it a little bit already, you know, from the conversations I've had offline with other, you know, indie artists, this seems to be a common thing where we're dealing with just mindset stuff, you know, a lot of second guessing, a lot of worry, a lot of doubt, um, you know, on how to just, you know, move forward um, and not realizing that, you know, a lot of these things are kind of self, you know, created and we don't have to, um, you know, sit with this and, it, it, it's really important to me as well and why I want to do this talk because I'm actually a product of someone who's dealt with daily anxiety. I mean, overthinking seasonal depression. Like, so I, I deeply empathize with this topic, with this topic and genuinely feel for like everyone who struggles with it, you know, for the majority of my adult life, like more than I probably like to admit, like I've just dealt with anxiety, like, you know, a lot of anxiety, low Anxiety, like all these different flavors of anxiety like i've just had and it's fueled just different things like procrastination and laziness and complacency and doubt and all this all this nonsense you know what i mean and you know so i've just been on a mission to try to decode a practical way of how to overcome this thing and it took me like probably about a year and a half to really like understand and get to a place where I, it almost feels like virtually you know, the anxieties that I used to deal with are not there, you know what I mean? Like, or, and then when they come, I'm, I spot them a lot easier and can deal with them um, a lot quicker. And, you know, it just changed the quality of life I have. And so the goals for this talk is to hopefully give you all like some really, really practical ways on how to overcome anxiety and, and cultivate just a liberating mindset as an independent artist or creator, you know, like over the years, I've had to develop these little like hacks, you know, like, you know, you see these life hack things that's all around the internet. So like I've had to find hacks in my life to overcome like my negative, like the negative tendencies of my personality, you know, cause you know, like I just have a lean towards like people pleasing and I, I lean towards fear of rejection. And I lean towards, um, you know, just like overanalyzing, like deep overanalyzing. So I've had to find ways to, you know, combat some of those things that are just natural to me. But also a goal is not to demonize who and how we were made, right? You know, because, because for example, I mentioned, you know, my, my you know, a, a negative tendency could be towards people pleasing, but people pleasing in itself is not a bad thing. You know what I mean? Like it's a very, it's very useful in just serving others and, like creating peace and disputes and making people feel understood and valued. So like people pleasing is not a bad thing. Like that's just how I'm wired and it's a beautiful thing. I need to celebrate it. You need to celebrate how you were wired. It's not to demonize them, but we're trying to, you know, just keep an eye on when those things go too far left or too far right. Right. Um, another goal is I don't want this talk to feel like unattainable or esoteric or just like out there. Like I just, I hope to present something that's very actionable and, and something, 
you know, like something very actionable in a way that I found on how to address these things. You know what I mean? Because it's, you kind of walk away, you know, just feeling good. Like I just, I want you to have a strategy moving forward, you know, in your quality of life and in your journey as a, as an indie artist. And, um, and one of the reasons why, like we wanted to do this too, is that, you know, I want us to learn how to encourage ourselves and not expect for anxiety to just magically go away or for others to always, you know, have to come to our rescue all the time and get us out of this rut. You know what I mean? Cause you know, if you're seriously going to sustain a career in music and in sync, uh, you, you know, you just have to kind of get a thicker skin. Um, you know, if you're constantly second guessing yourself, um, if you're getting offended when someone doesn't email you back or your music getting criticized and you're taking it personally all the time, like you're just not going to have a vibrant uh, or productive career. And so we want to help, you know, you sustain, you know, just these, these new relationships that you're beginning to like, as you're reaching out to music supervisors and dealing and having different co-writes, like, you know, you, you need to have like a certain groundedness in yourself to be able to function and thrive and keep, you know, like winning in this space because, you know, people want to want to work with you more if you're bringing that energy and you're confident and all that kind of stuff. So we want to kind of get all that stuff out of the way. Um, so that's, that's the, the shorthand of why we wanted to do this talk and, and what some of the goals are uh, for this talk. So let's, so let me just dive into the key takeaways. I just want to, you know, run through them real quick and I'm going to obviously, you know, expound on them. So for this, sorry, can you guys hear me? All right. I don't know if I'm dropping it now. Mike just text me. You hear me? All right, Eric. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I hear you really well. My bad. Can you hear me? Eric? Yeah. Yeah. And I was hearing you good before. Okay. Okay. I wonder if I turn my Bluetooth off and stuff. I don't know if uh, I think my wife just got home. I don't know if it connected to her car by accident, but hopefully all that came through. All right. Um, yeah, we got, did you I hear got the it. Majority of that, Eric? Yeah, I got all of it. All right, cool, cool. Bet. Um, all right. So some of the key takeaways for um, this talk, and there's seven of them. And again, we're recording this. You don't have to take notes. We're going to make this. A, and I haven't even told Eric this, but I want to make this a free resource to people. Uh, we have some, you know, for, you know, paid ones or whatever, but I just really want to give this one away. Um, but uh, the, the seven are admit it to yourself. It's first one. Number two is question why and where this thing came from. Number three is speak the opposite to yourself. Number four is avoid negative people. Number five is get to know yourself. Number six is make a daily routine. And then number seven, I'm going to save and share at the end. So you got to stick around. All right. So let's try to dig into this. So the first one is admitting this thing to yourself. First off, I just want to say, like, when you're dealing with anxieties and, you know, just negative thoughts, you got to call it out. You got to admit it to yourself. And I want to give everybody permission to know that it's OK, like not to be OK sometimes. You know, it, it it's a big release when you take the time to say, man, I'm really feeling anxious right now. I'm really feeling angry. I'm feeling depressed. You know, I, I equate it kind of to like I equate it to like, you know, when we're dealing with all these thoughts and we're, it, like it just builds up in us. And it starts to feel like a, um, you know, like admitting it to yourself kind of becomes like a pressure release valve because you got all this tension, all this pressure, all these expectations kind of circling around and you have no way to release them. And par partly why it's not being released is because you just haven't confessed it to yourself. Like you can't you can't heal what you don't expose. And so we just have to give ourselves that permission to say look, I'm feeling this way and it's real. You know what I mean? Like these are my feelings that I have right now. And, and sometimes too, like just the act of that can like, like help you just really grow leaps and bounds and just your peace of mind. Because I equate it to like, you know how you, you know, you're talking with somebody and you don't necessarily want like necessarily an answer. You just, or not even not, 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 not excuse me, not that you're wanting an answer, like you're just sharing. And the fact that somebody's taking the time to listen and they're like, yo, I understand what you're going through. 
like there's a lot of peace just in that in and of itself. And so what this becomes, this admitting it to yourself is almost becoming your own therapist in a sense where it's just like, I get you, I hear you, you're validated, your, your experience, what you're going through is real, it's here, like you don't have to hide behind it, you know what I mean? And so that's why I say it's like we want to take some time to just speak this thing and and and, and speak it out loud. I, I, I want to emphasize on that, like say it out loud to yourself. Like I just like there's times where, where I'm just like, yo, I'm, I'm feeling really like uneasy right now i'm feeling depressed you know what i mean like i'm feeling anxious and that's just that first step to now dealing with how do i get from out of this place so that's the first step we want we want to admit it so and i think this, this is like the first step to like the 12-step program for like recovery and all that kind of stuff whatever but it's powerful it, it, like that that type of honesty is is very is very very powerful all right so admit it to yourself is the first step right Next, we want to go into questioning why and where this feeling came from. We want to take a minute to track when that anxiety started and what caused it. Because like, I, I don't think we take enough time to just sit with our thoughts and really examine how like how we got to this place. Because you're like whenever anxiety shows up, it's not. It's, it's, it's not just out of the blue, you know what I mean? Especially if you start the day off fine and then you end up an hour later feeling anxious, like something happened within that hour that caused that anxiety. And so we have to start getting a little bit more like intentional to say, let, let's go back on whatever rabbit hole we were because something, you know, was it something that somebody said? Was it, you know, something that I heard? Like, did I say something to myself that ended up, you know, getting me to compare myself to somebody else unreasonably, um, you know, like, you know, am I feeling incompetent in, in some way? And that's, you know, it, it's causing anxiety. Like, what was that thing, that experience that happened that made me feel like, you know, I, I'm just uneasy right now. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm fearful. I'm, I'm getting depressed. Um, you know, we have to, you know, take that time to examine our own thoughts and get really specific on what thoughts show up. And then also you'll start to notice how often, like when you start to do it, you'll start to notice how often those, um, those thoughts come up because like, if we really start to look at it and start to track it, like that's like, I love data. You know what I mean? Like I love like analytics and all that kind of stuff because it just helps us to like plan and strategize. And so the more you start to be aware of like, Oh shoot. Um, you know, I seem to get anxious about this, this flavor of situation, you know, whether it's comparing myself to X, Y, Z person or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like there's something like, we'll, we'll start to notice those patterns. Like, and even a quick example, this was something that happened to me recently. Like last week I was out in Ohio doing a, um, a songwriting session and shout out to Taylor. I think I just saw her jump in. Um, I was out in Ohio and I was, you know, doing a photo shoot out there and we were writing some new music for, you know, my Sonny O brand. Um, and during that time there, like normally when we're there, like we're always in the flow, like we're kicking out songs, you know, like we, we just is rolling. We, you know, we're knocking out dope stuff. And for whatever reason, this particular day, like I was there for a week, one of the days during that week, I just felt like I just hit a rut. You know what I mean? Like I just couldn't get the ideas out the way I wanted to. And I'm, you know, and I'm thinking that, you know, on the other side, like my producer, he's kicking out tracks and, you know, he's doing his part. And I feel like I'm not carrying my weight well. But in that moment, I started to feel like really self-conscious and I'm thinking like I'm starting to think for him and thinking like maybe he's, you know, in his mind criticizing me. And then I'm comparing myself to other people that he's worked with. And it's like he's probably thinking like, man, this don't happen with other people I work with. And so I'm starting to bring other people into the session that's not even in the session. You know, what I mean, it's like all this stuff started like to bubble up. And I had to like really pause and I went downstairs. I got away from, you know, the session for a minute and I had to do these, these very steps. I had to admit what I was feeling. I had to go back down the pattern of like, how did this thought even start up um, and just analyze it and just see like, oh shoot. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm feeling this, this anxiety because all of these things. And I, I don't even know if I was all the way aware until I took some time and say like, I'm, I'm feeling uneasy because of, all of this thought work and I'm all of these situations that I'm creating in my mind. Right. 
So that's why I say it's, it's really helpful to gain that clarity and question why and where it came from, because it gives us data and it helps us to, to again, expose that thing that's troubling us. All right. Um, so next, I want to I want to go into our third point of um, speaking the opposite to yourself. So for those, you know, just getting into the room, you know, we talked about admitting you know, the anxiety or the things that we're dealing with to ourselves, whatever that negative thinking is, like admit, like, or, or not even the, the feeling that we have, admitting that to ourselves, to questioning where that feeling originated from, you know, because they don't just come out of thin air. Like there's something that triggered a feeling in us. Um, and now we just have to examine the relevancy of it, where it came from. And, and, and it gives us, you know, a bit more clarity of how frequently these things come up if we see it come up you know, multiple times. Right. So now the third point is to speak the opposite to yourself. Anxiety comes from rehearsed negative thoughts. All right. Anxiety comes from rehearsed negative thoughts. We have developed patterns in our lives to rehearse a type of thinking that doesn't serve us. And this is why, you know, we end up becoming so anxious so frequently because we have so much training of telling and creating these, these worlds in our mind that don't even exist. You know what I mean? Like, like I've heard it like this. I've heard it said that worry is really fear painting pictures in your mind. Usually worry is about future events that haven't even happened yet, right? And our goal is not to ignore, like, reality. Like, there, there's legit things. And for, like, there are things and situations that happen that, you know, we, that that would be understandable if we were anxious about them. You know what I mean? Like, th there's reality and even the probability of things happening. But see, the, the interesting thing is when we get into the space of, the, the probability of things that could happen. You know, we start thinking about the what ifs. Like that's what I'm talking about is, is we, we rehearse a particular scene, you know, like a, a certain dialogue, a certain narrative in our head for so long. And the thing about it is like, it never, it, it's never even happened. Like it hasn't happened yet. But the crazy thing is about the power of negative thing is that it can create and make us feel as if that thing already happened and it never has. But, but, but but I'm just trying to like just paint the picture of just like how like how much and how how affected we are by our negative thoughts and the power you know of our of our minds of our brains and what we can do and how it can just shift our internal state of being. And so if it's true that negative thoughts can have that much power, how much is the opposite true? How much is the opposite true when it comes to our thinking, when it comes to we know we already intimately know the effects of negative thinking and what it does to us. Like it doesn't serve us at the end of the day. But the thing about it is we created it. We thought about it. And so on the other side, and like I'm, I'm going to get real, like just real honest, because like when it comes to like positive thinking and speaking the opposite of what it is that's going on in front of us. Like I, like I, I remember coming up and hearing like motivational speakers uh, and cats talk about like, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta speak positive. I don't know. I don't know if anybody's seen the movie Nacho Libre uh, where like, there's a scene at the, like at the end where Jack Black is about to fight, you know, this guy named Ramses and he's in the locker room and his trainer is like oil in, it's so weird it's so weird to see but he's like putting oil on his back you know what i mean and just speaking to this guy Ramses and telling him like Ramses is number 1 Ramses is the best Ramses arms are the best like it's all these weird little like affirmations that he's saying uh it is it's a funny you know illustration but it reminds me of just like when i've heard in the past where people say like you know, you, you have to affirm yourself. You have to speak positive. You have to do all this. And it always kind of feels like, all right, bro, that sound cool. You know what I mean? But how does this really help in my now? You know what I mean? Like how does positive thinking really going to turn the corner on what it is that I'm dealing with when these feel, I have these feelings, these overwhelming feelings, this overwhelming quote unquote situation right here or the potential of a situation. How is positive thinking going to really like change this? Like that's how I used to feel until 
you know, I took that year and a half to really understand the power of speaking the opposite. And so if I'm in a situation where, you know, again, even going back to the, the Ohio situation, I had to get away and realize all of the negative thinking that was causing this anxiety in this particular situation. I had to then say, look, yo, like, you know, I, I had to tell myself to get away, encourage myself and say, like, look, you, you have to like, Jared, you, you're doing so good. Daraj, you're doing so good, man. Like, you're an amazing writer, bro. Like, look at how many people love your music. Like, look at how many people are rooting for you. Look at how many songs you've created. Like, look, you know, it's like you are really, really talented. Like, give yourself some credit. Like, ease up, bro. Like, you got this, man. You, y'all always not, you know, create some dope stuff. And by the way, we did create uh, like a ton of dope music while we were out there. But I had to end that situation. Like, I had to, I had to flip the switch. And instead of creating these negative thoughts, I had to flip it and start talking to myself and affirming myself um, to the point, and, and I didn't stop until that thing switched. You know what I mean? Until like, if if my emotions can switch that quickly off of negative, like from off of a negative thought, it can switch that quickly off of a positive thought. Like I, and, and I feel like that feels maybe foreign to some people, but it's very true. Like I've seen. Like, I, I'm very convinced, like, positive thinking and affirming yourself and speaking the opposite has the effect to immediately change your mood and your outlook on a thing where that anxiety can leave. Like, I'm a firm believer. I've seen it time and time again. And so that's why I'm so, so, so passionate about it. Um, and so the goal is to change our inner dialogue to something that's more helpful and productive to our mental and emotional state. And I, and I, feel like there's probably a part like of our society that feels like negative or excuse me positive thinking is like weak you know what i mean like it's a weaker posture to try to like affirm yourself and speak in that way it feels unnatural because i feel like we're so used to doing like it's so you even know it's like it's so easy for people to just talk about negative stuff and gossip like that's why the news is the way that's why you know social media and reality like all these shows and all this like culture and stuff like it gets driven off of you know like the things that rise to the top are usually things that probably don't add as much like value to your life and they can re you know encourage you know something negative but on the on the contrary like positive thinking is sexy because i think you know people just feel like it's just weak it, it doesn't you know it doesn't sell it's not say so but i'm just here like for those who are just really trying to change your emotional state like really tap in and understand the power of you know changing and aligning your mindset to things that are more powerful uh, excuse me, a more positive. Um, okay, so we're at uh, 8.34 right now, Eric. I don't know, should we do a room reset right now? Because I know I've been like going hard in the paint right now, so I don't want to get, get too far ahead of myself. No, it's really, really good. We can do a short, just a short um, reset, and then we need to get right back into this because you're, you're dropping okay, a lot perfect. of awesome stuff. Okay, perfect. Go ahead, stuff. bro. So um, if you have come in, uh, you can see this from the title of the room, and you, hear, you probably hear what... Jared is talking about, we're talking about overcoming anxiety as an independent artist. If you're new to us, we're Control Camp. We're in a community that's helping each other uh, learn, uh, rise up, and achieve within this realm of sync licensing, which is writing music for film, television, ads, etc. And so normally every Wednesday we're here. We are um, engaging with music supervisors or sync agents or other people in the music licensing space and just sharing information. And so today we're doing something a little different. This came out of one of our after parties that we hold usually after this room uh, on Wednesdays. Uh, and this is just a very a topic that resonated with a lot of people in the room. And so it's something that all of us are as artists or as creatives can identify with. And so Daraj has been taking us uh, on a guide to overcoming anxiety as an independent artist. And he's covering um, seven key steps for doing this. The first is admitting it to yourself that you deal with, that you struggle with this anxiety. The second is questioning where it came from, where, why and where it came from. And the third is speaking the opposite to yourself. And that's just where we stopped right now. We're going to points number four, which is avoiding negative people. Number five, getting to know yourself. Number six, making a daily routine. And then he'll go into number seven as, as like the bonus. But um, if you want to, to check out anything we've talked about in the past, if you're just getting new to us and you're like, hey, where's the sync licensing? 
you can go to our website, controlcamp.com, and on our resources page, all of the stuff we've done in previously on sync licensing is there. So now we're just going to continue with this special talk with Daraj. Take it away. Awesome. I appreciate that, Eric. Yeah, so, um, man, and, I, and I'll tell you as well, just to, you know, be honest, like, you know, I, you know, I, I was in prayer, you know what I mean, over this, this particular um, room topic and, you know, wanted to just you know, like wanted to hopefully add like values to people in this particular space. Is that like it's something that's really, really like, you know, if, if you can't tell, it's like I'm really passionate about this thing because I just know how crippling it is. I just know how like, you know, it, it just feels like you just self sabotage yourself, you know, because of this one thing, and it, it's, and at times it kind of feels like there's no. It almost feels like this is this is how things are. You know, like, it's always going to have to be like this. Um, but I just stand as just like encouragement of like, it, it doesn't have to be this way. Um, and there's a new norm and a new quality of life that you can have. Um, you know, once, you know, you really anchor down and, and get diligent and, um, you know, attacking this thing head on. So fourth point is, uh, avoiding negative people. And so as intentional as you are with cultivating, uh, a positive thought life, you need to then surround yourself with the right community that will reinforce those values. Right. You know, I like, and I, I don't even think I realized this, like after a while, like I, I, I looked up at the, the circle of influence and the people that I had around me. And I don't even know that like I did this intentionally, but I started to notice that the quality of people I had around me, you know, started to reinforce like, the type of person that I wanted to be, you know what I mean? Like my, like one of my best friends, like he, he's had like a way rougher life than I've had, but somehow he just doesn't wear it. He doesn't look anything like he's came out of. And I've noticed just how he just has aligned his mind in such a different way. And his outlook on things, you know, are way more, um, um, liberating and positive and encouraging and hopeful and optimistic and and I've seen that trend in those who, you know, uh, seem to have an admirable, you know, countenance and, and all that kind of stuff. It's just like it's just it's just a trend I see. It's just like they just, you know, do, have a lot of uh, practice, a lot of gratitude, a lot of thankfulness. Um, and they just keep a, a close circle of people to just reinforce those things, because, you know, like it's, it's very true, like constant exposure to negative dialogue will absolutely erode you. You know what I mean? Like you, you are the sum product of the people that you hang around. You know what I mean? Like slowly but surely, if you're around people who are always just, you know, just draining or just, you know, pessimistic and always, you know, seeing the glass, what is it, half full or something like that, whatever it is, like they just take a posture that's just like, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm not you know, thinking in, in an elevated place of, you know, solution oriented or, you know, I'm not pouring, you know, I'm not, I'm not monitoring, monitoring my words um, to serve, you know, whoever the listener is to serve myself, all that kind of stuff. Like they're just constantly, you know, just bringing you down. And you know, those people, man, like I've had people like that, where it's just like, you just, you just jump in a conversation and you was fine before, but as you get through the conversation, like, yo, why do I just feel like heavy? You know what I mean? It's like, what, what in the world? You know what I mean? It's like, I was cool before, but it's just like, now it's just like a whole different energy, man. And like, and it's, it's, it's very like, it's, it's real. You know what I mean? A company you keep will influence like who you become. And so if you want to begin to really make a dent in this particular area of your life, you may have to slowly, um, you know, uh, like slowly and lovingly distancing yourself from those who just aren't ready to change um, their thought life in that direction. And for me, like I'm, I'm, I'm super intentional with like who I keep in my circle and when I'm creating music and I'm doing business deals and all that kind of stuff, like I will opt to not work with somebody who's like insanely talented and even insanely successful if the energy is off, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care how, how good you are, like how many placements you got, like how much bread you got, you know what I mean? Like for me, 
it's not worth it to, especially because I'm always looking to do, like, if I'm connecting with people and I want to work with them, it's like, I'm trying to do build something long term, you know what I mean? And people that I can invest in and there's kind of mutual interest and all that kind of stuff. So even, you know, bringing it back around the sink, it's just like, not everybody is like, you know, fit to work. Like, not everybody just connects and some people is just, it's, you guys are better at a distance, you know what I mean? And, you know, those people who become your, your close advocates and recurring, um, you know, just creators in your circle, um, and even just community in your circle, like keep those people close. Um, shout out to Marcia, shout out, uh, to Jay Anthony. He's in here. Like these are some of the people I know, like John, uh, Samino, like John, um, Navarrete, like climb, but like all these people, like I've, I've identified them early on, you know, and it's like, yo, I love working with these people. You know what I mean? Like we share common values and we just are able to grow together and it just reinforces the type of person and um, that I want to be and become and grow. And, you, and I just I see that you just create better things out of that place as well. So as a creative, surrounding yourself with people who you enjoy being around and reinforce a mindset that's not, you know, uh, that's not going to push you towards anxiety or, or where you don't want to be. Um, it's super, super crucial. So don't negate um, keeping the right community and avoid negative people. Um, so number five is getting to know yourself, know thyself to lead thyself. And this is just the, and, it's, and I, and I know, like, I realize a lot of these things probably seem very, very like ABC one, two, three, you know, like these aren't things that are like groundbreaking things to do, but it's, it's so funny how we don't put the simplest things into practice that really have the power to help us to grow leaps and bounds. Like we just negate the thing that's always been there, assuming that there's something more that has to be done, you know, in order to cr create the result we're wanting. But a lot of these things are very, very like simple um, things. It's just the hard part is implementing them consistently. And so getting to know yourself, this is just the process of helping you become more self-aware. And so what that looks like in practice is like begin to write down your tendencies because they're like you have certain patterns like i was talking about this before you have certain patterns and things that are just innate to you or you know your escape mechanisms or whatever it is is like if you have the tendency to overthink if you have the tendency to overhelp, if you have the tendency to overeat or overcommit or you struggle with, with speaking up or you, you struggle with speaking too much or whatever, like whatever those things are that are unique to you and specific to you, learn those things about yourself. Like if, if there's some qualities about yourself that just nag you, like write them down, get familiar with them and pay, pay attention to when they show up. Another thing is understanding what situations actually create stress for you usually again we're, we're creatures of habit you know what i mean like we thrive off of patterns you know what i mean it's like you probably go the same way to work every day you know what i mean it's like you probably get up out of your bed on the same side of the bed you know what i mean it's like you you probably log into your like we have these patterns that we build it because they're they're safe for us you know they they create this you know us um what's the word I'm looking for, um, security and, you know, sustainability and all this other kind of stuff, you know, we're creatures of habit. And so we just have to like, look and see what situations have I encountered that produce negative thinking that produce anxiety for me, that could produce stress for me usually and get really, really acquainted and understand like when those things show up so that you know how to, so you know how to show up when those things show up. Right. You have to like, and, and also a way, um, like, like a way to, um, you know, really just target. And again, I'm trying to get us to get really, really practical and really, really like intentional with understanding how we're wired, where these things come from, how they show up and, and, and in essence to know how to combat them. You know what I mean? Cause it, it at times feel like we're at a war with one of ourselves, you know, at a war with ourselves. And so this is all a part of just getting to know yourself more. And another thing I want you to start doing is remembering a time when you were not anxious and how you got there. 
this is really crucial to understanding what may be your go to to help you overcome anxiety because like and I'm the next thing I'm, I'm going to talk about is like a daily routine right but the things that I've identified for myself um might look different for what helps relieve stress and and get you into a, a better mind state um than what they do for me and so a, a, a hack to kind of like reverse engineer yourself if you feel like man I've dealt with I feel like I'm always dealing with anxiety but try to recall a time where anxiety left or wasn't there what was it that specifically happened because that might be the thing that's unique to you to say I may need to do this more frequently when this thing shows up for me I, I've said it a bunch of times like words of affirmation is big for me like that's that's my love language right and so I have to take the time, like knowing that about myself and how much words mean to me, like I have to like, like encourage myself in a way that I feel is encouraging to me. So I'll tell myself like, bro, you're killing it. Like you, you're doing so good. Like you are an amazing artist. Like you're, you're going to, you're, you are going to overcome this thing. You know what I mean? It's like, you've, you know, like I, I've had to develop that language that means something to me so that. It like that means something to me and also helps me to believe it. You know what I mean? It's like, I have to choose to believe all of these things as I'm speaking them as well. Um, and that's, that's a, that's a, a big component of it. It's like understanding what are the things that, um, help me overcome anxiety when that, like identifying those things. Um, and then, you know, reverse engineering and say like, yo, know, this, this might be, you know, something to implement as a practice whenever anxiety shows up whether it's taking a walk or whether it's, um, you know, reading a book or getting away, whatever it is, like something, we have to figure out what that strategy is to help us. Um, and also finding that right combination of words and in, in the right sp- pace, place and space we need to be in um, to help encourage that mindset. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm looking at my notes right now and just talking about how um, like knowing our triggers, I touched on it, but I just want to reiterate some of these points that I've written down as far as, you know, the things we deal with are not random. You know, if we really stop and think about it, there are patterns and similarities to all the anxieties that are specific to us. And the things that we deal with will continue to show up. Like it's, it's guaranteed. Like there are things that are just unique to you and you're going to, ha- you're going to keep dealing with them. They're going to keep showing up. You know what I mean? And so we have to find out those patterns. We can't just ignore them. And the thing is, is the hopeful, the hopeful thing is that these things don't have to be um, like they don't have to always live with us. Um, sorry, I'm getting text messages. They don't have to live with us forever. Like they are defeatable. And these are the ways that we can, you know, begin to create a new uh, norm for ourselves moving forward in the future. Okay, so I got like 10 minutes left, so I'm going to try to breeze through these things. And like, I wish, again, I always wish the clubhouse had a way I could see like the, like, you know, how you can flash your mics up here to know like, it, you know, people applauding your stuff. Are you getting, it, it, it just, I, I, I just really want to, to ensure like this is locking in for everybody. So number six is to make a daily routine. And if, I feel like almost out of anything I've said, this is probably one of the most important ones that has changed um, and moved the needle for me tremendously. It's helped me grow leaps and bounds because like once I realized that my mind does not stay put, like my mind is not fixed. Like if I'm ever in a state of like, you know, uh, you know, clear thinking, anxiety list thinking. I just made that up. Like, you know, like if I have just a peace of mind, it, it, it may not always stay there. You know what I mean? And it, it really clicked for me when I started to put into like, you know how we, we, we have certain non-negotiables in our lives, right? You know, every day we get up, well, most of us every day we get up and we, you know, we brush our teeth. We have these hygiene routines, um, we know that if we don't eat every day, um, or eat the right things over a certain amount of time, like our, our bodies are just going to shut down. So we make it a priority to eat every day. We know if we don't get sleep every day, we're not going to be able to function every day. And we have that same kind of non-negotiable mindset and approach to, um, 
those areas of our lives. But when it comes to our minds and our minds are so freaking important, you know what I mean? Like they, you know, they, they lead us, you know what I mean? In our thoughts and in our, our reasoning and in our emotions, like our mind is so, is so important. Um, we don't have a routine put in place to feed our minds in the right way consistently, like every day, not just occasionally. I'm talking about like feeding your mind the right things every day. And so for me, I've had to adopt a routine every morning where I get up and I'm like, I'll listen to the audio Bible. Um, I'm, I've found certain YouTube channels online that just have motivational talks and they're just like 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Or whatever. And I just, I just sit and listen to them and I meditate and I pray. And I, like, I had to find what that routine was for me that would feed my mind the right things every day so that when I go forward in the day, I'm fueled, I'm energized and I'm reminded of where and how I want to be thinking rather than just assuming that life is just not going, you know, life is just going to stay in a, in a, in a state that's going to be free from anxiety. It's like, there's, you, there's been so many things that could come up and show up in a day that we're unprepared for. But when you've taken that time um, to feed your mind, the right things, you begin to have a better defense against all of those, you know, other um, uh, triggers and, and situations that come um, and you, you're a lot more prepared and anxiety shows up a lot less. I mean, even when it does show up, you know how to respond to it a lot quicker. And so finding out what that daily routine is, um, do not expect your mind to stay at a positive state. Like you, I can't stress it enough. You need to, to feed it every day. And remember, we're teaching ourselves a new skill and unlearning years and years of anxiety producing habits, thoughts and imaginations. Like you are literally undoing probably 20, you know, for some 25, 30, like however long you've been alive, like if you still like you're undoing that amount of years of thinking that produce anxiety for you. And so that's why it's so uh, vital to like to get aggressive, to aggressively attack that thing every day and feed it every day. And it's going to take some time. Um, and so that that's the sixth point. So let me get into our bonus um, or the, the last and seventh point. The bonus point is to give yourself a lot of grace and patience through this whole process. You know, I, I just left off with talking about how like we're, we're undoing years and years of um, thought work that just hasn't served us. And so we have to give ourselves the time, the space the grace, the patience to say, we're going to get through this. And it may not be perfect, you know what I mean, every time we attack this thing, but know that you're in a process. Like I mentioned, it took me like a year and a half to get to a place where I felt like, yo, I like I'm, I feel like I, I'm able to, you know, address the anxieties that used to come up so consistently because I, I wish you guys knew me more. And like, I wish I could know you guys like more closely because I mean, I've dealt with times where I'm just, I'm just in tears, you know, I'm crying myself to sleep. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm just, I'm dealing with like a low level anxiety, just always for no reason, if, you know, quote unquote, you know what I mean? And I just, I hated living with that. You know what I mean? It's like, I hated having that nagging me all the time. Um, um, like it, I'm getting emotional talking about it. I'm about to cry right now, but like, like that's just the, like how much I've seen it you know, in my life. And that's why when I found a way to overcome that thing, I was just like, yo, this is what, this is the missing piece. This is what has been like the, the one thing that I, I haven't been able to, um, it didn't click yet. And, and it took time for it to click and it took practice. It took me, it took time for me to develop that skill and that habit. Again, it's like, we're developing new habits of thinking. Um, and so I would just say it takes time but it's worth it. You know, you're, you're undoing decades of anxiety fueled thinking. Uh, so just celebrate and affirm yourself. And I'll leave you with this last example. I remember this from years ago. My, my pastor at the time was sharing it. It was an interesting perspective where, and like life is like, life is very cyclical. You know, we, we deal with things like in seasons, like literally like, you know, there's seasons within the weather, you know what I mean? Like there are, um, just 
cycles and and recurring things that we see in life. And that's why I even mentioned like the stuff that you go through, you'll probably see it again. And 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 you might even see it at the same time in a particular part of a year. You know what I mean? Like just because things are cyclical. But a lot of times when we're trying to overcome and we're trying to grow, we feel like we're not making progress. We feel like we're going in circles. It, it, it's almost like the image of we're looking down at ourselves and we just see ourselves walking in a circle. Like we just walking in a circle like, Dag, I'm dealing with the same thing again. I'm dealing with the same thing again. But if we take the time to change our perspective, instead of looking at ourselves downward, if we shift and look from the side, we'll notice that we're actually doing an upward spiral. And so even though we're not where we we feel like we ought to be, or even if we feel like we're you know nudging up against the same things and we're going in that cycle, it's like an upward spiral. You know what I mean? It's like we're 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 growing. We actually are growing every year, every every time we challenge our you know our thinking and every time we we take that step to overcome anxiety um in that particular time and season in our life we're taking a step towards growth and so we're moving upward even though it looks like we're spiraling and we're not getting anywhere um so i'm actually really proud of myself because i feel like i got through that <laughs> like on time uh, so yeah i just want to encourage you guys and and i know we're going to step into the next space of like q a uh, I think Eric mentioned it a little bit. We're, we're trying to figure out how we, you know, the best strategy in doing this because it's, it's a little different of a room. And so I think we'll have people, you know, raise hands um, who either have a question about it or who, you know, um, and also who want to add to the conversation. But we're going to try to navigate. I think Eric kind of has a better handle on how we're handling that that side of it. But Eric, I'll let you jump in. Yeah, I just want to say, man, that this, this – um everything you said up to this point was one really powerful and it's even for me, like, I mean, we've, you know, known each other for a little bit and, you know, done some work together and then building this thing together and just, you know, I, I, I think just by the nature of what we do musically and who we are as you know, just the nature of our industry, we're very like, successful publicly and then we tend to like str struggle privately and so for you to be as open and revealing as you are within this talk you know things that I didn't even know about you and I'm someone who I deal with anxiety I deal with perfectionism and I struggle with you know self-talk and telling myself that it's taken me too long to get to this point and fighting all these different thoughts. And so to hear you be so open with that, I know that that's been helpful, you know, just, you know, um, for people listening. So I just appreciate um, you sharing as vulnerably as you have. And, um, and I just, I think it's really powerful. It's moved. It's definitely um, moved and enlightened me. And so, uh, what we so here's what I'm thinking of doing. I want to, um, I as opposed to just jumping into a Q and A because we're doing two things. I'm gonna do a little reset in a minute, um, but I, I, we're gonna pull a few people up to the stage that I think can contribute to this discussion. And I want to just kind of talk, you know, about kind of what we've been talking about. And I'd like to continue. It, for the people coming on stage, I'd like to continue to have a vulnerable discussion because I think that would be what's of most service um, to the most people is if they see, especially the people that have already been on this stage as successes. And if we're able to talk about, you know, as Daraj has, you know, that those successes have not necessarily been because we are without emotional struggles but they've been while fighting these emotional struggles and then we can talk about all these coping mechanisms and how we're what we're doing to to you know still be able to write songs and still make briefs happen and still get deadlines done you know maybe there's times we missed the deadline because of things we we're struggling with but I want to pull um, a couple of people up to talk about that and then let's just see how that we're kind of freestyling let's see how that discussion goes we may get to a and a we may not get to a and a If we do, um, great. But I think we have the after party that starts at 10, and that will probably be a better suited forum for 
more freestyle discussion of just everyone. I'm, I'm more worried if we do that in here, if we just kind of open it up here, we'll, we'll, we'll get more into story mode and, um, and that won't be facilitated as good as a discussion. So um, let's um, start with kind of what we've got going on here and then, um, and then let's see how that goes. So while, while Jared is bringing some um, people up, let me do a quick reset. If you happen to have just come in, we are Control Camp, Diraj and I, Eric, we are your hosts. Uh, we created this space to help um, musicians, independent artists learn, grow, and gather together all in this, under the mission of um, getting success in sync licensing. And so learning how to get music on television, films, advertisements, uh, et cetera. And so every week, Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we come here and usually we have different music supervisors or different experts in the sync licensing space. And they're informing us of specific paths that we can do to, to get ourselves these placements and get our own music uh, in these catalogs. And so Daraj and I have a significant amount of experience. We both have a lot of placements on television shows, advertisements, trailers, et cetera. And then we bring people up who also have either on the musician side or as an executive, you know, who acti actively live in this space. But today, as normally where we're talking more about how to get your music, today we, talk, we, talk, we talked about a topic that came up in, in the after party a couple of weeks ago, and that was overcoming anxiety as an independent artist. And so um, Daraj just kind of walked through seven steps uh, to deal with anxiety so that we can continue to be creative, so that we can continue to... Um, master in this space while all these negative thoughts might be plaguing us or fighting us. And so it, no worries if you're just coming in or if you missed it, we record all of our sessions. And so if you haven't seen some of our sessions from before, or if you've missed this one, we make the notes available. We take notes at all of our sessions. Shout out to Maya, uh, who, who takes notes. She's uh, uh, right below the stage in the top left-hand corner on my screen. Um, but Maya takes all the notes and every week we, we publish them. And then we also make a video, uh, not a video, but an audio uh, available on a private YouTube link. And so if you go to controlcamp.com and look up our resources page, you can see how to get access uh, to, to all of those. Um, so with that, I'd like to welcome uh, John, Jess, Steph, Jaden, Armand, uh, John and Josh um, to the stage. And I'd really um, kind of want to just do an kind of open thoughts. And I wanted to just around, like I said, around what Darash has talked about, but I really like each, some of you to talk about from your own personal space. Some of you are executives, some of you are creatives. And I wanted that mix to just talk, you know, you all have, have been successful in your realm and are having success in your realm. But I also know that just as humans, we're all struggling with with this type of thing, whether it's anxiety, whether it's depression, whether it's perfectionism, whether it's uh, self negative talk, whether it's self doubt, whatever it is. Let's just have some honest talk about how we get through those and as much as you're willing, hopefully we're all willing to add to this conversation and just um, and just share. So I just want to kind of open the floor with that. I guess I could I could open things up. Um, what up, guys? What an amazing conversation to have, and and you know this wasn't what I was expecting this to be, but it this really touched me deep to my soul. Uh, Daraj, I feel like you you're really speaking the language that really helps me get through a lot of the anxiety that I feel. Um, and it's still something that I struggle with. Um, and I think that like, that is the, that's the main thing that I'd love to impart to anybody that, and just reinforce from what you were saying. It's like, this is something that to some extent, all of us are dealing with on a daily basis. And it, it doesn't just kind of let up because you land a placement or you get a certain level of success. It's, um, for me anyways, it's like, it's, it's just interesting how it presents itself. The anxiety can present itself in so many ways. Right. For me, it's like that anxiety to, 
from pressure to overachieve and and like the imposter syndrome kind of kind of pressure and that's where i think a lot of my anxiety comes from and um it's really interesting how this like even manifests up like a physical level it's like I'll, I'll notice that i'm getting anxious when like i'll just get it's like my eyelids starts twitching like kind of uncontrollably it's just it's so weird like it but then it just it can it can get into your just your flow the, the confidence that you hold when you're going into business negotiations the way that you show up in your creative endeavors and I just wanted to also possibly drop a couple things that helped me with this. Um, I mean, I was taking notes with everything you were saying, Daraj. Uh, it was all just like such great stuff. I could tell it just comes from the heart and comes from your own experience. And I feel like that's really the most valuable thing that we can share is our experience with this sort of thing. And, you know, if it reaches out and touches like one person, it helps lift them up. Actually, you know, when it comes to like the imposter syndrome stuff, that's the thing that I like realized was like really helpful for me was just realizing I don't have to be the best at anything. I can just help people that are like, if I can shine the light up for, for some people that, that if it touches some folks, it doesn't have to have to reach out to everybody. If I can just be a light for some folks that helps me take off some of the anxiety for me when it comes to all that stuff. Uh, Cause I do a lot of starting to do more and more like public speaking and um, teaching courses and, you know, doing all kinds of fun stuff like that and being more in the spotlight. And the more that that happens, the more potential there is for this imposter syndrome, anxiety. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about, just like, these are just some random tips uh, just things that I find that help me like just get centered and feel good. It's like, I, I loved what you were talking about about morning routine. I actually uh, heard this in another clubhouse room recently where they were talking about uh, some CEO types were talking about just like start your day off with a win. It's like, I wake up, the sun's coming up, open my curtains up, let the sunshine come in, make my bed, you know, start off with a win, check off some type of accomplishment that I just like get like right off the bat feels really good really great way to start off the day and then uh, a couple other things it's like i just really try to take the word i've been really focusing lately on taking the word should out of my uh vocabulary completely and that alone i just have like put a put a real like mental note for myself because there's so many times where it's like oh i should be doing this i should be doing that and all you're doing is just like putting shame and pressure on yourself to for me anyway bad anxiety and performance anxiety like in terms of like you know showing up for my job doing what it is that i need to do every day um i just feel like those are the those are the couple things that come to my mind that and these things really help me out a lot um but anyways this is just like such a heartfelt and awesome conversation thanks for having this uh having this conversation on in, in like a sync room it's just like it's it's just a this this app just continues to amaze me and you two are just doing such a beautiful job of creating an awesome space where we can talk about this stuff that like it's like really this is really what we are dealing with as creatives so thank you thank you for this just thanks for uh letting me let me chime in with a couple things there yeah I'm looking you forward said, to hearing whatever else has to share on this you said something john though that resonated with me like and it sounds it sounds silly but the eye twitch like the eye twitch with the anxiety or just how like I felt that I've dealt with that. And then just how like the physical body always finds a way to give away, like no matter how like confident I might think I feel, or I feel like, Oh, I think I feel pretty good. Like some way or other my stomach or some part of my body, like, will, you know, like I've, I've done public speaking, since I was in college and I've spoken in lots of audience of all sizes. And so even this shouldn't be, you know, any big deal. And I feel very comfortable when I think about coming here, but ev before every clubhouse, I usually have to go to the bathroom. Like I, I, before every public speak I do, like my stomach will always like give away. And I feel like in my mind, I'm telling myself I'm very confident, but I've, I to me that's my trigger to to pay attention to something going on in my body, like okay, well maybe I'm not as confident as I think I am, or may, or what's worrying me, or there's something you know going on. So, I that just resonated with me when you when you shared that. Yeah, no, that was that was beautiful, John. Um, 
I, I love I love the starting their day with a win. Like that's what I was saying. Like it, it's just different strategy. You got to find out just kind of what like what really works for you. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's it's different strategies, but you know I hope a lot of the concepts that were given, you know, just helps fuel that that it starts that conversation in your mind. And it starts that search for you, you know, whoever it is. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really good, John. And I don't, I, I mean, I just want to keep the floor open. If there's any other thoughts that, you know, any other moderators have on stage around this topic. I'll share. Um, so a lot of people glamorize the music supervisor job, but it's probably one of the most stressful jobs you can have in the sync space. I, I, in my humble opinion, um, I'm the, I'm the kind of person who physically processes stress so that I continue to use my brain to push through and get my job done and go about my day like nothing's happening. And so it got to a point in my career where uh, the trauma of just being in the entertainment industry in general and being a woman in the entertainment industry and being in this really cutthroat niche side of the, the sync space in general, I finally got my dream job. Um, and it was the worst time I've had in my whole life. Um, I was, I was in such a bad place mentally. Um, and, and my environment was terrible. Just like Jared was saying earlier about the people around you significantly can affect you, um, positively and negatively. Um, so I got to a point where I just kept trying to push through that my body was physically giving me signs, kind of like you guys talking about with the twitching, the eye twitching. Um, my hair started falling out. I started having all these random health issues. I had to start going to therapy. Um, I was developing very unhealthy coping mechanisms that I never really talked about um, just to try to get through my day. And I realized um, also in my personal life, the people that were surrounding me were also just kind of making it worse, uh, because they weren't supporting me in the way that I really needed. And it was kind of just like continuing the snowball effect. And I kind of like took a step back and was like, this is, this is not right. I have to do something about it. Um, this isn't healthy. This is not living, you know, um, it kind of, it kind of like escalated, not escalated, but turned into the whole path of why I came out to Scotland in the first place. If anyone in the room has kind of heard Jaden and I talk about it, it's just looking to chase the joy. Um, and so I very much have shifted focus from chasing a career to chasing joy. And my life is every choice I make in my life is trying to focus on that and come from a place of that um, because chasing a career path really did me dirty and I did it to myself. You know, I made all those choices. I don't regret anything. I learned so much and I would do it all again. Even knowing what I know and what I have experienced, I would still do it again um, because I wouldn't be where I am now without any of that experience, the good and the bad. Um, so, yeah, I think the a lot of your points are are so on on spot with creating starting your day the right way for you is really the biggest thing that you can do is set a few things that you start for yourself. Like for me, I don't touch my phone. Um, I try not to, unless I'm, I listen to an audio book or I put my headphones on and meditate and listen to a specific music that's on my phone. Um, I try not to touch it because I realize if I start my day with the internet, social media, or like the worst case scenario emails, um, it kind of just sets the trajectory of my day on a, such a bad level instead of like spending time in the morning with myself to like really come and position myself to, to this like positive atmosphere and create a pod positive atmosphere in my day. Um, so that's kind of the main thing that I've been doing is starting my day correctly so that everything else kind of falls in line to control the snowball effect. I tried to prevent from my past experiences. So that's, that's a, my little share. <laughs> that was so powerful, Jess. Just and I, I, I think I was struck right away, and I appreciate you sharing. But just the whole, and this is something that um, I don't know. I think as an artist, even though I'm coming from an artist perspective as opposed to a career career perspective, but it's the same similar in that you spend so much of your life chasing something to get there and say, okay, you know, well, I'm thankful that I'm here, but this isn't exactly what I want, or this isn't the environment that I want to be in. 
And um, that's something that as in, with all the nightmares I've heard about the music industry, I think that's something in the back of my mind that's always been a fear. At some points, it's been something that's kept me, I think, or made me sometimes not push as hard. It's the 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 horror stories or the worries or whatever. I think that's made me hesitate at some points in time. But um, you just sharing that really resonates with me. So I appreciate you sharing that. There you go. There, there's like a power in in the fear of of uh, getting there or not getting there and figuring out what happens. Like we just watched the Soul movie and they talk about. Um, I can't remember the quote, but the quote is being a fish. Um, swimming through the ocean and they're looking for the ocean and they're like, well, I'm in the water, but I want to be in the ocean, something like that. And I was like, that's exactly it. That's exactly what the experience was. Is I, I got to the ocean um, and I was like, well, this isn't anything what I thought it would be like. This is the dream. This is what I have worked for and wanted my whole life. And I got there and it was nothing like I thought. And um, at first I it took it in a very negative way, but eventually like, through all like the work I did with myself and just in, internally um, turning all my thoughts inward, I realized I'm like, this is actually an extremely freeing moment for me. It's like, you did it. Now what? Like, okay, you did it. Now you get to go focus something else um, instead of going, well, this is awful. Um, I kind of chose to shift that perspective and see it as like a release. Like, oh, I'm free. I don't have to chase this anymore. And the world is my oyster. That's kind of how I felt afterwards. Um, and looking through lo- looking through the world in those through those lenses has really changed my life i have to say that is just powerful um anybody else oh yeah i'm going to jump in on this <laughs> oh yeah come on jay let's go <laughs> It's, uh, was it 2.18 a.m. in Scotland? So, like, wow. if my words don't come out right, now we know why. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, I, I love that you brought up this topic and you made a whole group about it, or a whole clubhouse um, conversation dedicated to it, because it is the most important thing. And I don't know how this is going to be run. I don't know if we're going to have a chance to listen to artists um, or people in the room that are their listeners come up and ask their questions. Um, but... I can say this. Um, First of all, I, for fun, teach music business at a college. And something I try to work with my students on is not just teaching them, like, the business side and everything they need to know to succeed in that way, but also just, like, the being human part, right? And so much of what people want to talk about and discuss and navigate are the exact topics and things that you're bringing people together to discuss in this room tonight. Because that is the essence of everything that we're, that's the essence of life, is just being a human trying to navigate everything that comes our way with as much grace and ease as possible. Um, so like, I get the feeling I'm going to be jumping in and out of this tonight, but like a couple of things I just wanted to like share that have really helped me other than like the gazillions of book recommendations I'm happy to give, um, is one I've noticed that. So, so I am a musician from birth. Like that is, my calling. That's the reason, like one of the reasons I exist. And I have experienced being the indie artist dealing with anxiety and stress and overwhelm and depression in so many different forms. And then also the, the terrifyingly vulnerable transition of reworking my identity from I'm the musician that everyone knows as a musician to I'm this person who works in business. Um, And that transition of going from identifying as an artist and having the world reflect that back to me to identifying as an entrepreneur and a teacher and all these other things um, was actually a really vulnerable transition in a very dark time in my life. So if anyone's ever making a life career identity transformation, talk to me. Um, But I noticed that a lot of what we do is we make things a morality conversation. So we make everything in the world. We label everything good and bad, right and wrong. And we're doing that from our truth. We're doing that from our experience of reality. And then we label other people and other things good and bad and right and wrong. And when things happen to us, it's always good or bad or right or wrong. And we're always like, There's always this mental chatter in our minds that's like trying to make sense of things and judge things and assess things and have an opinion and then try to figure out what's best. And what I learned is if you take morality out of it, if you take good and bad and right or wrong, 
and you just get really good with being what is. You start to approach life from a place of, is this workable or is this not workable? Does this, like, essentially, does this serve me or does this not? So, like, for me, when I was dealing with some really um, severe depression or if I found myself in a terrible job or if I was in a band where it just, like, wasn't, you know, it's something about it fell off. Instead of like getting caught up in the drama of, oh my God, this is so wrong. This is so bad. It should be different. Or if I was going through a bout of depression and this was a huge one, instead of being depressed and then telling myself subtly in my mental, like in my mind, telling myself that I'm bad for being depressed or this is wrong and I shouldn't be depressed. Like I'm just taking my depression and now like just compounding it with the negative self-talk of things should be different than they are. And I'm bad or I'm wrong, right? And then it just keeps you in this fucking horrible dark space. (laughs) Or you stay in that bad relationship or that bad band or that bad business, like whatever it is. And so I started this practice where I would ask myself, I would, I would look at things with, from a place of curiosity and lightness. So instead of looking at something and labeling it good, bad, right, or wrong, I would just ask myself, what happens if I just step back and I just get curious about my depression? I just get curious about this conflict with another person. I just get curious about the fact I don't know what the fuck to do with my life. And when I started to approach things that way and I started to intentionally bring curiosity and ease into a space, it transforms everything. And, and then beyond that, I always ask myself, like, is this workable or is this not? Instead of, is this good or bad or right or wrong? And it's that same thing. When you ask if something is workable or if it's not workable, you're kind of lightening the space around it, looking at it with curiosity, and then it frees you up in a way that, like, I didn't even know was possible until a number of years ago. So I just kind of wanted to share that because um, it's been it's been huge in my life, and I feel like... I feel like especially as artists and songwriters, a lot of times we have a tendency to want to like hone in on a thing and dissect it and turn it into the most beautiful work of art possible. But sometimes we take it so seriously and we get so sucked in. And I'm my like big transformation and, and the thing I like try to support other people in doing is how do we look at that tragedy or that darkness or that fear or the anxiety or the depression? How do we look at it with curiosity and lightness? And, and how do we, how do we do that with our music, with our art, with our gifts? How do we like, how do we write a song about the most severe depression we've ever experienced or the most severe anxiety we've ever experienced, but write the song where the entire time we're writing and we're creating that art, we're able to step just to the right and be curious about life. So that's like the one thing I wanted to contribute and add. And it's something I've learned and I don't know if it helps anyone, but there you have it from Scotland. <laughs> Scotland coming through strong. I, I, I love a lot of the things you said, Jaden, and like specifically on, I think we, we have a tendency to really internalize, like, like, like it's one of those things like we get depressed for being depressed and we get anxious about being anxious. And it becomes like this, this cycle of just an unhelpful, um, you know, mindset or, you know, whatever, however you want to call it. Um, and also, you know, that piece of just like, you know, if we do something and we label ourselves as, you know, now bad for either that thought or that thing or whatever, it does have that crippling power to like introduce all this unnecessary shame. And, you know, we're having to deal with, you know, a compounded sense of, you know, depression in the sense of off, off of, you know, things that we could eliminate, you know, from the onset. And so I think it's really beautiful, you know, the perspective you brought and also, you know, talking like, and I, I think that's why I like to kind of present it from a place of, are these thoughts or are these things serving me? Are they helpful? And if not, let's, you know, let's figure out what we need to do to get to the, to that place that ultimately I'm striving for, you know what I mean? Like, because th- there is a, it seems like there is a place that we're looking to arrive at in a certain place of clarity and peace of mind that we're looking for. It's just like, if whatever I'm doing, if the type of thinking that I have is not serving me, um, then then we need to, you know, let, let's try some new things to, you know, let's try a new way of thinking that does serve me and does kind of, you know, meet the expectations of, you know, the, the type of lifestyle and the quality of lifestyle that I want to live and lead. So, 
that was amazing, Jaden. Thank you. Thank you. And <clears throat> if I can add one last thing to that too, is that like, be care. We have to be careful about who, not careful, be mindful of who we surround ourselves with too. Right. Cause when we're, when we're struggling or if we're going through something and we're saying like, this should be different or this is wrong or this is bad or, you know, we're caught in that trap essentially. If we have people around us who are like, yeah, 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 that's, that's wrong or that's bad or that's horrible. It like just, it just is like doubling down on it even more. So to be, to surround ourselves with people who are like, I'm going to meet you exactly where you're at. I'm going to champion you and remind you that nothing is permanent. Like you're going to be okay. And then I'm going to ask you what kind of support you need and offer it if it's, if I'm available to do so, like at, rather than getting into that dark cave with that friend and like commiserating, it's so, so crucial that we surround ourselves with people who are like there with lightness, ease, meet us where we're at, support us and know that like, I'm, you know, truth is fluid and it's always changing. And so are we, um, and, and have that support system. It's so important. I think what you're saying is a crucial part of this conversation, uh, both in people and in life. And uh, as songwriters and creatives, we're not always the best at that. We're not we're not the best at it as a human race. We're extra bad at it as creative human beings because we're all a little more um, empathetic <laughs> than the average, I would say. But I think boundaries are the kind of most crucial part of the entertainment business and also who you're surrounding yourself with, you know, people think that I'm always sarcastic and funny about our kind of setup where I say, be, you know, to be a part of our camp, like be exceptionally good at what you do and don't be a douchebag. <laughs> and you guys have heard me in this room before say, just be a human. Like how many times we should make a bumper sticker for me by now, <laughs> like about be a human, because this business is not full of those people. There's a lot of exceptionally talented people who are not, some many of them are douchebags, but more importantly, don't understand boundaries, don't respect your boundaries, don't respect your time, your space, your you know ability to want to take time for yourself, your own mental health. We're not taught that as a society. We're definitely not taught that as a business. And I would say, as a matter of fact, everything I ever learned in the music business was you're not important. The client's important. This gig is important. This deadline is important. You know, uh, everything is a fire drill. So I think, you know, people will be a lot happier. I know that I was personally a lot happier when I recognized some of those things and started to set some boundaries. And not just about setting yourself up with people that you love around you, which is super important, but also not feeling bad about extracting the people that don't bring that to you. I'm not a big bring you joy person in terms of stuff, but I'm a huge proponent of that for people. You know, we have a easy time breaking up with boyfriends and girlfriends and things like that. We have a hard time breaking up with friends and colleagues. So you have to, I, in my opinion, take a look at people sometimes and just say kind of what you guys were saying earlier about other things about people too. Is this serving you to have this person in your life? Are they the person to kind of compound things and make things worse or are they person like Jaden said are they going to drag you out of that hole <laughs> you know like are they the people that make your day easier or are they the people that stress you out you know and and just because someone stresses you out doesn't make them a bad person it doesn't make you a bad person you just have to say are these my people and everybody's people are different what works for one person and one person's energy does not work for something else. And you need to just unapologetically, again, in my opinion, not feel bad about that. Yeah, man. I love all of the perspectives that are, are just kind of like ruminating around this topic, because again, like everyone here is, is very nuanced and has different, you know, experiences with this particular topic in their lives and how it shaped themselves and, what they've learned from it, how they combat it, um, you know, how they, um, like encourage other people, you know, even to walk through it and just, you know, again, those boundaries they set up for themselves, other people, and even the boundaries they set up in their minds to kind of keep, um, you know, the pacing that they need to align themselves with that, you know, the type, again, the type of life and quality of life that they're, they're after. Um, so I love all this. I'm, I'm going to do a quick re room reset. We're at nine 30. Um, and uh, just for everyone, you know, entering, 
uh, the room. If you've been listening, we are Control Camp. Uh, we're a community here built for independent artists who are wanting to get their music in TV and film. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Arise. I'm an indie hip hop artist based out of Orlando. Um, you know, I've had credits with, uh, you know, my music plays with Call of Duty, Lionsgate, um, a number of different places. Um, my co-host who's with me is uh, Eric Campbell. He's a, a composer, songwriter as well, and has many placements as well. Um, Greenleaf, Shameless, um, and, and many, many others. And we've created and curated this space to help um, independent artists uh, who are interested in wanting to grow and, and get their music placed in TV and film. Um, and create a safe place and community and conversation around that. And um, we do this every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a ton of resources on our website, controlcamp.com, and uh, and one of which will be this talk. If you missed it, don't worry. We're recording these rooms, and uh, all of our past rooms that we've done are on um, our website, um, on controlcamp.com. And also, um, if you join our Patreon, you'll have access to... Um, uh, all of those talks and also all of the resources that we've created. But today's session we were talking about is, is a little different from our normal rooms. Um, dispersed from the after parties that we do, which we'll be doing after this room, but um, the after party conversation of just how to, uh, like what anxiety is and looks like for, you know, the, the artist, the creative and, um, you know, how to overcome you know, that type of thinking, these mindsets, um, and was able to kind of talk through just seven steps that we've identified, um, that I've identified in my life to help and, you know, to hopefully be helpful for you all as well. And we're just kind of getting a conversation around that because, you know, again, it's not always a sexy topic, especially as artists, like, you know, we're very, our culture is very much like, you know, on to the next success. What have you done for me lately? You know, kind of grinding until, you know, we get it done at and sometimes at the expense of our own um, internal well-being. And so we need to kind of sometimes reset and take inventory and figure out, you know, am I OK? Like I'm, I'm dealing with things that um, I may not have given the proper attention to to really deal with properly, um, especially if they're not serving me um, in, in this journey, because if you're not a healthy person, you won't succeed in any capacity that you're really looking to in, in this space, you know what I mean? It's like, you're going to, you know, you're going to, um, you know, overwork yourself. You're going to, you know, people please to death. You're going to misplace priorities is, is what I'm getting at. And so, um, we just been having some, some really great dialogue. We, we turned on hand raising a minute ago. So if you just have a question or if you want to add to the conversation, um, we're creating the last 30 minutes of this talk to, um, you know, anybody in the audience who just may have something to add, but we'll also be continuing this after this uh, particular room and our after party um, with our control camp members. So if you're not a member and you want to, you can um, uh, go follow control camp. And um, it's the first room on our profile. If you go and look and, um, and you'll have access to, uh, you know, be able to uh, be a part of the exclusive room. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how to do this next. Uh, maybe we can. We got a couple of people that joined on stage and maybe we can, you know, get some audience feedback and any moderators can kind of chime in and we'll just see where this goes. It's, it's a little looser format. So I thank you guys for just being flexible with us. So, you know, maybe Jennifer, Jennifer, I saw you. Uh, I think you, you sent me a, uh, a DM while we were on here. What you got for us? Yeah, I did. And I just wanted to share with the room what I um, DM'd you about um, because I relate to all of it. I'm a mess, <laughs> um, um, a beautiful mess. Um, so many um, great things that were um, said here, and such great energy. Um, I, someone mentioned like something. It might have been um, Jess, I think, about chasing joy, and. Um, one thing that I struggled with, but I, I, I think I figured it out and a tool to help me with over the last few years is um, everyone always sees me as like a sunshiny person and a happy person and always happy, happy. And, you know, no one's happy 24 seven, but I'm definitely one of those people pleaser person so that even when I'm not happy, I don't want to 
burden anyone with that. So I just, I wouldn't let them know, you know, only like my husband or like my best friend, my super closest, you know, family would know. Um, so I realized it in those times, it wasn't um, that I wasn't happy, but when you're not doing something you're supposed to do, or you're at a, you know, this, this kind of impasse in your life, that it's, it's not happiness. It's not that you're not happy, but you're not joyful. So um, I learned about this tool and I think of different, you know, motivational speakers and stuff probably talk about it, um, about how to cultivate joy that I wanted to share that worked for me. Um, and it's super simple. It sounds so dumb, but it was so effective. And I keep a gratitude journal um, by my bedside. And um, for a year straight, um, I can I tend to be a little obsessive, but for a year straight, I told myself every morning when I woke up or, you know, maybe later in the day if I forgot, um, I would write down something I was grateful for. And I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to keep it up for a year. And it was super simple. Something like, you know, oh, what a beautiful um, sunrise this morning. Or, um, you know, it was so nice yesterday when so-and-so said, you know, um, they appreciated my song. Or maybe a little girl smiled at me. Um, and each day I would just do one thing because I thought for sure I was going to run out. And what happened is, is when I started like being conscious, not subconscious, but being conscious about everything that I had, um, no matter where I was at that time in my life, it, it cultivated joy, a state of joy because happiness comes and goes. No one, like I said, is entirely happy. We all go through different ups and downs in our lives, but I do believe that it's possible to cultivate like you know, a fluid state or a constant state of joy in your life, which makes you more patient and makes you less anxious. Um, you know, we get anxious when we think about future. We worry when we think about the past. It actually helps you uh, be more in the present, right? Um, uh, like we're all doing right now. We're all listening to each other speak and and really trying to focus. So it worked for me and, and it worked for me really quick. Like literally within a few days after writing something down, it stuck in my subconscious brain and in, in my conscious, it made me a more joyful person. So I just wanted to share that little trick. And then because I'm an obsessive person, it really took me a year for me to like let it go. And I realized that it could be used then as a tool. So whenever I find myself getting off the path of joy, and you know getting anxious in that I, I pick it up again and I use it and it kind of calms me so I'm less you know less anxious and such so I just thought I would share that if maybe you could help somebody else thank you Jennifer that's I, I love that and I, I try to do gratitude journaling every morning so I really appreciate you sharing that if you don't have the ability to or if you're not the type of person to journal, because I think that's a great thing to do. Um, it's also, there's a simpler version of that where you can just say one thing you're grateful for in the morning. Like my songwriting partner, who we call the Zen thug, because she's an amazing rapper, but she's also just into all the things that we're talking about on here and has kind of mastered it already. She challenged us on Instagram to just say one thing. And I was like, no way. And then I started doing it. And I was like, that's pretty fucking genius, actually, because... You know, I learned from media training people that we have a tendency as humans to be very negative. And if you think about it like this, if you trip and fall or if someone doesn't open the door for you or if someone does something rude, what do you do? You go tell like everybody you talk to. Oh, this asshole just slammed the door in my face or you just say, pardon my French, you know, you tell everybody when something bad happens. But if somebody does something nice for you, like holds the door or does something nice, we don't say shit. It's not exciting. That's not what our media teaches us to do. So if you make a, you know, I, I've now learned this and I think what Jennifer said was really brilliant. If you don't have the time to write it down, just say it or take the opportunity to recognize when it happens and just make a conscious effort for it. Yeah, I, I love that. And one of the key things, too, that um, um, that she was saying that I, that, I, that stood out to me was just being conscious of you know, what she was thinking, conscious of being, um, grateful. And, and that's one of the things I, I probably didn't dig into a lot in the talk, but 
like there's been a lot of just like studies that show just a, a mindset and cultivating gratitude does a tremendous amount um, just for your well-being and your mindset. Um, so I, I just love that we're on that. Um, so we can try to get through everybody. We may c- try to keep the responses maybe to like a minute or so. Uh, I know, and that's the only thing we, we didn't we didn't know how to really moderate this because this is a really like heavy topic, and I know everybody, you know, is is like is going to want to pour out. So we'll try to um, like share as, as as much as you can, but also kind of tailor it to just be respectful because we got some other people on the stage, and we want to try to get through as many as we can before we hit the after party for those who won't be able. Who may not be a part of the club, but um, we got John next. What up, John? What's up, y'all? Oh, so I was talking about the other John. Okay, <laughs> oh, hi, I'll, I'll talk. Oh, but if John, you got something, no, go, ahead go for, for it, man. John. No, oh, go man. for it. Hey, you know, t- t- two Johns. There's room for all of us. But um, hey, I, I, I want to, you know, thank you guys for, you know, first of all, the, the fact that they're all the people that are here right now at this moment. You know, why is that? It's, it's because we're, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're not here by accident. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're all in the, we're all you know, feeling the same kind of thing. And, and, you know, and I feel gratitude just to be here with you guys today and to, to, to be able to benefit from, from everything that, that, that you guys are giving. Um, and the whole idea of gratitude, echo what Jennifer said, I thought was, was wonderful. You know, it's it's funny. Like a a prayer I've said my whole life is like, "Thank you for this moment." That, that's all we have, you know. And it's like, uh, so like you know, it, I, I remember being. You know, I, I I still do this, you know. I'll be in the shower and like hot water. And I'm thinking how lucky you are to have you know hot water. One time I had mine turned off, but that was college and everything. But anyway, it, you know, like it just the, the water rinse, you know. Uh, uh, you know, warming up your body and how good that feels. You know, being able to see see the sky and say, you know, the, this unique combination of clouds is never ever going to look like this again. And I got to see it. You know, and, and you know, I, I always tell my my kids like in the fall, I said, wait for a leaf to fall. You know, and they'll see a leaf fall. And I said, you know how special you are to, to to see that. I said that leaf. How long was that on that tree? I said it started in the spring. It grew. And it waited until you looked at it to show you that beautiful, you know, thing. So, so it's like, you know, being able to, uh, you know, I, I, I've found in my old age that it's like the, um, it's the little daily things, you know, and, and it's, it's a very emotional thing. Um, but just having that daily gratitude and saying, you know, thank you for this moment and thank you guys for this moment. Thank you, John. I, really I feel that. like I feel like that's one of the things that like it's it's uh it's very easy to forget doing what we do, you know, being songwriters or producers or singers or creators or being in the music business, like you know, it just becomes regular, right? Like it's just music. You're just making another song, you're just singing another song and the next one and the deadline. But it's music. Music used to be medicine. Like this is like one of the highest forms I feel of meditation of language. Like I feel to me sometimes, you know, I mean, times are tough (laughs) a lot sometimes, but it's like, it's like if you take the time and instead of just going through the mix as fast as you can, or like what, adding the plugin or whatever, and you just sit and just listen to what you're doing, dig the bass, like just, dig the music like engage on the privilege like there's there's the people that listen to the music without making it without being jaded from all the amount of times that you've written a song or 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 made a song for whatever pitch or something they just get into it and and once you like are present into the actual music that you make in i feel sometimes it just serves you as that breath as that little chance of meditation and 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 you forget about it because you're desensitized because it's day in day out making music mixing music and it's just taking that little time to take that medicine that you're making you know? yeah but and we i this is so powerful because it's like we spend and i'm guilty of this like we're on we're in the race we're chasing this thing and we're we're riding to 
to specs and we're rem- trying to figure out formulas and it's so it's so easy f- to forget that what you just said that we're actually creating this thing that's supposed to be healing so many people including ourselves and I was like I need a permanent reminder of that cuz you know it's just I'm I'm always on the chase and you know have to remember well what this is that we're like stewards over that, that that's a powerful way to put it Hermione. Yeah, it it was a lot of really dope stuff, and it's, it's it's again I was saying before it's like these things aren't like you know they, they aren't hard you know what I mean to really grasp, but it's just these simple things that are like very 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 powerful, and I can even attest to what John was saying. It's like I mean it's times when I'm like I'll jump in the car and I'm just I try to be mindful. It's like yo my car started you know what I mean it's like I got a I got a vehicle to get me to where I need to get you know what I mean and, and that's not. You know, it's like we take it as a given or it's like as a, you know, it's like that. that's the baseline. We ought to have cars that work, but it's not always the case for everybody. You know what I mean? It's like to be able to have these things in our lives and to recognize like how much of a blessing each one of these things are. And even what John was saying about like, I mean, that's a dope visual. It's just like how how long was that leaf chilling up there? You know what I mean? To be able to experience it, the, mo- the moment and point in time where it dropped. You know what I mean? Like that was... That, that's really poetic and really interesting and really powerful, but um, I appreciate you, John, for sharing that. I want to um, try to get some more uh, feedback in from, you know, some of the people we pulled up. I see Fidel uh, down there, my, my guy. I love this dude. We, we kind of came up in the same circles in the Christian hip-hop space. Uh, I'm excited to see you on here, bro. What you got for us, man? Hey, what up, bro? Thanks for having me. So um, I know I only got a minute, so... I just want to say, first of all, mental health is really important to me. I am an indie rap artist. I've been full-time for some years now. And uh, I remember how much anxiety that I had when I first started out. And the reason, the way, the big thing for me when it came to anxiety, man, it was merely just my expectations. I realized that people's expectations of me and my expectations of people was really giving me anxiety because the I was making music to make my peer group um, applaud me. I wanted my peer group to to like me, to feel like I was the best. And what I realized was the style of music that I really loved to make, they didn't respect. And so I had to make a decision of like, was I going to make the music I authentically make, which was, you know, more of a, you know, Lil Wayne trap style music, or was I going to make the music that they more so respect, which is more of a Kendrick Lamar or Jay-Z type of music. And that struggle of wanting to please them, I mean, it literally, I wasted money trying on branding and beats and overpaying for studio time and stuff like that. Until one day, I remember it just, I put out a project and they liked it, but they didn't like it the way I wanted them to like it. And it sent me into like kind of like a self-discovery. And I said, I never want to have the feeling that I put out something to please people and I wasn't proud of it. And, and for me, the journey of anxiety, um, that really started me on the path of, um, of freedom because I, I realized that if I manage my expectations, I won't, I won't put myself in positions where I am trying, I'm reaching for something that I don't really want. It's just something that the people around me who are good people, they're loving people. But I've heard a lot of people here talk about how much it is to have boundaries. I heard the word boundaries. As artists, I realize that boundaries and expectations and uh, of the of expectations that people have for me was a big key for me um, being able to have a breakthrough in anxiety. Man, and and like knowing from, you know, like even where Fidel came from and, and also just in general, like how powerful it is to say like, like we, we even talk about that. Like I'm real big on expectations as well. I'm so glad he brought that up because I feel like we just have like we we have these internal expectations of ourselves and expectations we think other people have of ours. And, and, and again, I think it goes back to that constant chase. And when we're in that place, we really don't allow ourselves to be fully who we are. 
and we end up like again it just adds to the cycle of just anxiety and depression it's like man i'm trying to you know i'm jumping out here to try to please everybody i think i'm trying to you know i think what i'm doing is what i'm really you know i need to be doing it what's for but it's not really again it's not serving it's not meeting that that place that i'm, I'm really you know after uh and so that's powerful man like really you know having that self-awareness is say like who who am I? What's important to me? Like, what's the message that I want to get across? Like, what's true to me? Um, and doubling down on that and being shameless in it, I think. So that that's super powerful, man. I, I appreciate you for that. Um, we got um we got Garfield uh here. He always has some some good stuff to say. What you got for us, Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, family? Um so interestingly enough, um I had a conversation with my wife after dinner and she was uh, expressing to me how she decided to take a break from social media and not only social media, but all media, which brings me to my point. One of many points I kind of made bullets to keep me concise with what I have to say, um, how I'm led to say, but, um, we got to check out toxicity levels. If I said that right, toxicity, I think I said that right. Um, check out toxicity levels um, and how much we are allowing ourselves to consume unnecessary information daily on top of all our personal situations that we also have to live through, live with, go through daily or weekly, whatever, monthly, right? Um and we're in obviously a social media age and more and we should know um or become dis dis better disciplinarians of ourselves to you know get off clubhouse turn off ig delete it if you have to don't watch tv like just turn the world off sometimes and become comfortable with peace right and be intentional about going after your peace um i get it now, it may not be easy for a lot of people's lives because of different living situations or marital situations or relationship situations but you gotta fight for it somehow or another things are going to be crazy you are going to be tested even while pursuing peace but it doesn't mean that you should give up pursuing your peace and in peace you'll find clarity in peace you'll find joy um you you'll recognize things it's, one thing i said is like uh, a person doesn't a person doesn't realize how much of a thing they didn't need until they get rid of all the shakes you know what i'm saying like once you you if you didn't have money to pay your light bill or something like that and you couldn't watch tv and you lived a month without it then you realize oh snap I don't really need to watch TV anymore. I really don't have to be on social media anymore. You become a better disciplinarian of yourself of when you go on to certain things, but then keep note of those things. Check your emotions also. Like this might speak more to men. I might be speaking more to men at this point, but I think it also applies to women, but um, check your emotions. Don't be afraid to cry. If you have to like get that stuff out of you, uh, we are humans. Like you, you, we can't continue operating daily as if we're just in a bubble a media bubble or a, a social media bubble or just living for others we're still humans um we are still we're also servants we are we have most of us in this room are, are obviously creative to do something um sonically audibly or visually visibly so we have to also have an outlet to empty ourselves of things so that we can be replenished with new creativity, new insights, a new way to think, a new way to live, and, and be the leaders who we are um, and innovators who we are, who are channeling and driving and steering and, and, and re really um, making trends for this world to be excited about, excited, excited about living like some of you already said, like John and some other speakers, like we, we, we can't carry around, carry around dead weight and expect people to also be continuously happy about the work that we present to them, especially if we're not in the right uh, mindset. So, um, right. without taking up too much more time, 
uh, you know, that that's some of the things I wanted to, to just um, share, like be responsible by, about our emotions a little more. And I'm saying this because I'm talking to myself as well. Um, and if we need to take breaks from certain things, let's just do it so that we could get to the place where we really God wants us to be for us to be who we are supposed to be in front of others. That's uh, <laughs> that's beautiful. Whenever Garfield talks, I feel like uh, it's probably not true, but his profile picture, he's like, in a suit, you know, he's got his blazer on. Is like that's how I picture him talking, <laughs> like with that, <laughs> like with that Bible. It's very profound, um, and I second it, you know, to the umph degree. Like, I mean, I think it's true. Like, even what Jess was saying, like she has that routine. It's like I don't touch social media when I, you know, or email when I wake up. And I think those types of, um, they can be interruptions sometimes that, you know, again, they're not neither good or bad, but it's just, again, if they're not serving us in, at this particular time, we do need to have, you know, that level of, you know, create that discipline, create that routine to where that's not our first go-to, you know what I mean? Like we're not flooding ourselves with unnecessary, um, information that's not helpful for the particular time. Um, really appreciate it, Garfield. All right. Garfield, I'm obsessed with you and your wife. Just FYI. I know you're not up, so you can't talk and comment, but love it. And I, I'm with her. I delete social media for months at a time. So fuck yes. Okay. <laughs> nice. uh, I wanted to jump see? in if possible. What up, John? Go for it, team. Daraj, Eric, John, Jess, Steph, Jaden, uh, Herman, John, everyone uh, on the stage and everyone in the room. I uh, just wanted to say thanks uh, for this topic. I know with this kind of topic, it can get weighty. And uh, there's not much, I don't know how much I can add that hasn't been added already. Um, I know for, for me, ooh, uh, one thing I've learned that, that I keep kind of to, to my, to, as, as a kind of personal thing to myself is... Uh, when you sow a thought, you reap an action. When you sow an action, you reap a habit. When you sow a habit, you reap a character. When you sow a character, you reap a lifestyle. And it's like all the seeds that you plant. Um, and that, that little phrase is important to me because I think about how long it takes to create a habit. Right? There's, there's different studies on it. You know, Some say 20 days, some say 60 days, some say 40 days. But it's possible in repetition to create a habit. And when you think about how powerful the thought is, um, it changes everything. And, uh, you know, this, this world is that we're in, you, you need a strong mind. And uh, that's kind of, you know, what my little addition to this, um, something that always helps me. Because I know that the more I do something, it becomes a part of who I am. And I have to, I'm always careful with that. So I just wanted to share that. Um, and secondly, uh, Daraj, I sent you a message. Um, I don't know if this is the right time for it, so I, I won't say anything. Uh, but uh, Daraj, I sent you a message. Uh, for, for your uh, followers, is something you can add to your um, resources page. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, if it's cool, if I could share it, I guess. Uh, let me, uh, I'm, I'm going to check it out, but I want to, I want to try to get through some of the, uh, the others that we have on stage so we can transition to the after party, but let me check it out while, uh, Demetria goes up, but I'm so yeah, glad it, we're recording this, bro. Cause that was like a mic drop, which you just said. <laughs> that was really good, bro. No doubt. Um, so yeah, if, if anything, you can share the, uh, the information I gave you for your after party, I think it'd be beneficial for your followers. Definitely. I appreciate you T. Let me and before you start, Demetria. Let me just say we have so we have three people left. We normally end right at ten, so I'm going to ask this: the last three people, if we can, um, if you don't mind, even though this is a weighty subject, let's try and move the conversation along. Uh, and then I invite everybody. If you're a member of us, we we gonna we can continue this conversation in our after party, which is the room that starts right after. You just have to be a member of the club, so you can click on our profile and follow our club, and we'll continue. Uh, for the next hour or so. Um, 
But uh, I wasn't asking. I hope you didn't leave. Um, I'm going to get everybody who's on the stage to <laughs> speak. I, so you, you didn't have to drop off. I wasn't saying that. I'm sorry if I misspoke. Um, but uh, yeah, just um, we want to try to be out of here in the next five or ten minutes. So just keep that in mind, please. Okay. <laughs> I know that was aimed at me. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, no, I just wanted to add gratitude, and we've all spoken about gratitude, but forgiveness. Forgiveness. Some of us are holding petty grudges and, you know, and actions. And also forgive yourself. Forgiveness of self is super important. Sometimes we've done things in our lives and we've had, you know, setbacks and we've got baggage, but forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. It has been, it has changed my life. So I just wanted to share that. That is so powerful, Demetria. Thank you. I, and I, I, pre- I appreciate that and agree. And re- repeat that. Yeah, that's a whole nother room. <laughs> Forgiveness. That's a, it's a whole nother room, y'all. <laughs> right there. Powerful. Hey, John, how you doing? Hey, and, thanks for letting me join. And you're new to um, Clubhouse, John? Is this your first? You, how new are I've, you? Yeah, I literally joined yesterday. Oh, welcome. Glad <laughs> um, to have so you. I'm just getting to grips with everything. So, yeah, thanks for letting me join. Um, I've got two things. Uh, firstly, uh, one's going to be like more of a signposting for those that are uh, struggling. I know it's a weighty uh, subject, um, but hopefully it will help and send me uh, maybe a bit of advice from my side of things. Um, so, firstly, if anyone hasn't come across BAPAM, which is the British Association of uh, Performing Arts Medicine. Um, I highly, highly recommend um, searching them. Um, they're very, very good um, with mental health within the within the performing arts. Um, that's BAPAM, so it's B-A-P-A-M. Um, they're based in the UK and they are a charity, but they're super, super helpful. I, I do work with them as a, as a practitioner there, so I highly recommend them if anyone is particularly struggling. Um, and I, I guess just to finish it off, um, I would say last piece of advice would be to breathe. I know it seems simple, but a lot of people hold their breath a lot, hold a lot of tension in their shoulders, and it comes across in their music and everything else that they do. So don't forget to just have a little bit of a deep breath, and hopefully that will make your day a little bit lighter. Hope that helps. Oh, uh, I'm reading a book right now called Breath or Breathe by um, James Nestor. And it is really good, and I do recommend it to anybody who wants to know more on that subject. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much, John. Give John a follow, you guys. He's brand new. I don't know him. I just think he's great. Yep, I just followed him. Support people. That's another really great way to, you know, (laughs) relieve anxiety and (laughs) do nice things. Yes. Y'all are awesome. Um, So... Thank you all. We're going to kind of uh, do a quick transition. Again, um, if you missed anything or came in late, we go to con- our website, which is in my profile or Daraja's profile, and sign up there. If you're on our Patreon, you can get access to all of these replays. You can get access to all the notes that we take. And uh, we're here every Wednesday, and we'll be back Saturday for our listening party. So you can go to our website and submit music if you want to um, be reviewed. But uh, members, if you're a member of Control Camp, when we're going to close this room. We're going to open up the after party. We can continue this conversation. We can talk about other stuff. We can talk about GameStop. We can talk about whatever we want to talk about. We're going to be in the after party just chilling. So come see us over there. Oh, yeah. And again, I, I just want to say thank you for everybody um, on stage. John, Jess, Steph, Jaden, Herman, John. Um you know, for being a part of this conversation specifically, and also for everyone who who showed up and who stuck, around, you know, stuck uh, stood around and and listened because this is again, it's a little a little off script, um, and we just didn't know what and where this would lead. But it was just one of those things, like amidst all of the you know sexy or quote unquote stuff we could talk about, you know, we just feel a burden that this is you know something that in the midst of just all the sync dialogue that happens is probably not um, talked about. And, you know, it's just one of the things that fuels a lot of our thinking and decision-making and, you know, where we, you know, kind of end up and how we even perceive ourselves and stuff. And that stuff is, is, is immensely important. You know what I mean? As we're, we're trying to grow in this space. So I just appreciate everybody for uh, showing up, adding to the conversation 
And uh, without further ado, we're gonna slide over to the uh, to the after party. Keep it was a dope going. convo, bro. Thank you so much for organizing this. It was just really dope. Absolutely. Before we get off, I just want to say thank you to both of you for creating a safe space for everyone to be able to have a conversation like this. So before everybody jumps off and some people are not in that room, got to give you your flowers. Appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, uh, thanks, Steph. All right, everyone. All right. If we don't see you, we take care. We're moving and we'll, over to the after party. We'll see you in the after party. <laughs>